Sagada has stood the test of time. It was first founded as a refuge for people from Abra when they were being pushed out of their towns by warring headhunters and later by Spaniards trying to baptize the local population. Ganduyan, as it was once called, stood strong. The highlands of the mountain provinces Kalinga or Ifugao are some of the only areas in the Philippines that have had little Spanish influence, maintaining a strong, unshakable indigenous identity that we should all respect and admire. This area gives you a very distinct perspective from what you're used to seeing in the coastal areas and is one of the few provinces where you can get a glimpse of our pre-colonization culture. Today, with the influx of tourists, things are changing, but the local community is making sure that they're staying true to their roots. Sag uh, Sagada land is only for Sagadanian, and then they never welcome investors. So whatever you can see here in Sagada, or see in Sagada in the establishment or anything else, that is owned by the Sagada, so they can guard their own self. Yeah. If you let the investors come in, it would 100% encroach the place. Please, if the day come in Sagada, be cautious about their garbage. For the last 50 years, the Philippines has always been talked about as a nation on the rise, with high growth potential and touted as the next big destination. The country has so much to offer and the tides are finally coming in and we want to show you this beautiful nation and what needs to be done to preserve what makes these islands special and keep them more fun forever. So join me as I take a closer look into the archipelago. Just last year, the combination of perfect weather and a long weekend created a meme on social media that was dubbed the Sagada Carmageddon. This shouldn't surprise us. This town has lots to offer, but on this particular weekend, the yet to be defined carrying capacity of the site was clearly overpassed by tourists chasing a particular picture next to Lake Danim. Thankfully, the mountain provinces in the Cordilleras have so much left to discover. We've been exploring different areas of the mountain provinces in Kalinga for about five days now. We've been on the road and it's been amazing, um, but we will talk to you about those places a little bit later. But now we are heading towards Sagada. It is our last stop during this trip um, on our big trip north. And the reason why I like going back to Sagada, I've been there a couple of times already, is just because it's just such a comfortable little town in the mountain province where a lot of the other towns are, are a little far-fetched and it takes a little more, um, let's say, effort to kind of go through the different spots that they have because of the length or you need to walk and everything. Whereas Sagada, everything is in one place. To get to Sagada from Manila, one has to drive roughly nine hours on a very good day. Most of the time, this trip will take you closer to 12 hours to make. It's nestled between the main Cordillera mountain range and the Ilocos range, creating a very particular terrain where everything grows bountifully, surrounded by natural wonders with temperatures that heat up during the day and drop to jacket wearing weather at night. All of this creates a unique little mountain town that people can't get enough of. This is kind of the main area here in Sagada where everyone is. There's a bunch of cars, but not a lot of people. So maybe the rain is kind of deterring people to come out. Um, one of the reasons people come here is just because every modern comfort that you would want from a mountain town is here. This restaurant filled up real quick. We were just talking to our, our guide, JR. But it's still such a kind of cozy, friendly vibe. It, it, fe it does feel like kind of, you know, if you, if you go skiing in other countries and, and after skiing you go to these chalets and kind of hang out, wooden houses, this is pretty much the vibe that you get. Um, everyone just coming together, having some beers and some good food. And right now we are in Salt and Pepper, which is one of my favorite places to come eat here. Um, having some otag everything. So we have otag sisig, we have otag stir fry, we have an otag pizza coming up. Um, <laughs> pizza. 
And everything's just beautifully smoky, tasty. Their vegetables are nice and fresh. Um, there are tons of other places you can actually come eat and drink here. And we can list them all down for you. But right now I am just starving and we're gonna kind of smash all this food because I think we deserve it after all the traveling that we've been doing. And tomorrow we're gonna show you a little bit more about Sagata. I love that there's a local brewery like in the province. Like I think that's part of the charm is that you can find things that are super crazy. crazy. Thank you. Compared to all the other places that we've been to. And it's good beer. It's really good beer. <laughs> so Sagada at night, um, it's something that still boggles my mind. Like when you, if you think about where we are. You know how you, when you go to the beach, you kind of have like a, a beach community with bars and restaurants and stuff all like in one area. This is pretty much the same thing, but in the mountains. Um, and it, it feels very unique and it feels very special. I've partnered up with the Department of Tourism of the Philippines to try and focus on locations and destinations that really are trying to push sustainable tourism. Um, and the DOT this year has really been focusing on developing sustainable tourism solutions and destinations. And I think that's extremely admirable because in a country like ours that is so rich with natural resources, Tourism and tourism development can really be a driving force in the economy for years to come and its impact is massive. It can help local communities, it can give people jobs where they didn't have them before, um, it can bring international exposure and, and it can always bring lots of positives but also the downside of that is that it could also bring a lot of negatives and the way to mitigate that is to make sure that you have the systems, the ordinances, the rules and the regulations in place to make sure that something doesn't get overcrowded or something that was beautiful doesn't get destroyed. But the most important part when it comes to tourism destinations is having a strong local community because at the end of the day, they are at the front line of making all these things happen and protecting what is theirs. So we're gonna be rolling out multiple videos um, about sustainable tourism destinations and we thought Sagata would be the perfect place to start because they've had issues of overcrowding and garbage, but what you'll see is that the community is really responding properly and they're just asking all the tourists to kind of follow their rules and regulations to keep this beautiful place beautiful for generations to come. And I think that's probably the most beautiful thing. It's the most important thing because at the end of the day, what we leave behind should be exactly how we experience it for the generations that come. I first came to Sagata in 98 as a young teenager eager for adventure. Back then, this felt like a secluded secret that one really had to put in the effort to access. Revisiting a place will always carry a veil of nostalgia with it. Warped deja vus of how things used to be. We sat down with Lester to talk about how things have changed for the local community. Uh, we also move with the development of the, uh, the development of the community, especially for for uh, our houses. It's it changed a lot. Uh, early 1980s, when you go inside the community, you still find uh, native huts, lots of native huts along the road. The roads were quite rough before. Before also, we found that uh, tourists mostly that you would be able to meet on the on here in Sagada were foreigners, and later on, the locals came in. Before it was also agriculture that was the uh, main economic source also for Sagada before it had been the agriculture. Then later on, mostly they're concentrated on uh, tourism. Everyone you talk to will tell you how lucky this place is. Blessed by the gods, they say. Mm -hmm. 
we are now here at the one of the remaining Aplai house. Aplai is one of the tribe of the Cordillera and Sagada is one of the member of that Aplai tribe. When you enter, there's a, this bed. there's a bed and then everything is in there. What do most people who come to Sagada, what are they looking for? About? Maybe the nature. Because when guests came here to Sagada, they say, what is in Sagada? Find anything. Uh, you can find anything except snorkeling because, <laughs> because we don't have the sea. But name it. Uh, trekking, mountain trekking, we have it. Spelunking, caving, we have it. Uh, waterfalls, uh, canyoneering, river rafting, uh, river crossing, we have it. Uh, maybe history, we have it. With so many activities within the direct vicinity, from the hanging coffins, a 2,000-year-old Igoro tradition, particular to the Aplai people that inhabit this municipality, to the endless rice terraces, mountain treks, waterfalls that seem to come out of nowhere, chances are you'll probably go visit all these places and you definitely won't be alone. Those who would like to observe could come in to observe a ritual from a distance. They are not allowed to be uh, to in to in to interfere with the rituals. Please respect the rituals. When they say no, please no. Yeah, because the rituals aren't meant to be yeah. tourist attractions. The yeah. rituals are real, authentic rituals yeah. that yeah. you guys value, right? It's amazing how this little town has so much variety when it comes to food and drinks. One of the places I like going to a lot, and I first came here a couple of years ago, was the yogurt house. Um, just because who doesn't want fresh yogurt in a mountain, especially for breakfast? And their yogurt is made fresh over here with whatever fruits that they have in season. And it's just always so refreshing and good. Like just the right amount of acidity, honey that's in there, and that's a local honey as well. Um, for coffee, if you're a coffee addict, Sagada is the perfect place for you. There's so many little shops, and I'll, I'll kind of list all of them down because it's too much to actually show you. Uh, so we'll just list them down for you to actually try them one day if you come here, so that way you have an option of places to try. We decided to go visit one of these coffee plantations to appreciate the hard work that goes into your morning cups. There are a lot of natural attractions in Sagada. Um, I prefer going to places where there's not many people. Um, but so we decided to visit this coffee farm um, because the coffee um, growing market here and the coffee business is really booming. And they grow a beautiful um, Arabica, which you'll find in town and you can actually taste in town. We're in Olive Farms, which was one of the first pioneering farms here and one of the largest. And it is such a lush, beautiful, dense coffee forest and it's just so green um, and it smells just idyllic. Um, so right here you have the coffee beans here um, and they do absolutely everything from the drying to the processing to the roasting up to the packing. A lot of this is actually also exported to different um, coffee blenders in the Philippines or outside of the Philippines. Um, so yeah, so one way to be a great sustainable tourist is to make sure you buy local products. Um, in Sagaba, that's not too difficult because a lot of the businesses are, like most, all of the businesses are locally owned. Um, but another way you can kind of help the local economy is bring these products home with you um, to have people try them. And then eventually if you like them, order them again. And coffee is one of those things. Um, so we're just gonna walk around, maybe try a cup, see what happens. Such a beautiful place to have a house and farm. Very calming, no? May bango rin siya, pero mas mabango pa rin yung natural. The 
beauty of the mountain provinces is walking through all these small barangays and just meeting the people because they're so generous um, and they're always so friendly and smiley and it just it really touches your heart and I think that's what makes this province so magical. So they just had a ritual here, a death ritual called Sunga, um, a couple of minutes ago. Uh, we didn't want to take any pictures, obviously, because it's not respectful. But I love how it's still such an integral part of their culture here, and that they've kept it alive, and that they've kept it for themselves. Um, I find that amazing. And if you get to witness it and be invited, then that's great. Probably can't shoot it, uh, but most of the time it's by invite only. The Aplai people, as with other tribes in the mountain region, each have their own ways of dealing with death, celebrations, and harvests. These rituals are cherished and keeping them alive is of the utmost importance to the tribes. At the end of the day, it's all about keeping the community strong and getting everyone together for important life moments. Same can be said about their other customs surrounding food or even their weaving. What my grandparents taught us was, it's you working with someone else. It's not that someone else working for you. It's you working together for both of your economical, social, or whatever advancement. While waiting on the tourist carrying capacity to be set, to help disperse the amount of people coming to the mountain provinces, make sure you talk to local people to get information on other places you can visit around the region. Now, don't expect the same amount of comfort, rooms, or restaurants, but you'll get to immerse yourself into sleepy, secluded towns that are rife with adventures where distances covered on the road and on foot will leave you winded, making the journey that much sweeter. For rice terraces, for example, you can go to Malikong, just a quick drive away from Bontok. Not far away, you have the weaving village of Kaneo. And further out, as you drive towards Kalinga, you have the village of Sadanga, often confused with Sagada. This was one of my favorite areas to visit. Only a handful of homestays for people to stay in and filled with local customs. This is something I only thought happened in Japan, but behind me is the hot spring, so it's, it's naturally hot water. Uh, so apparently, if I want to go in there, I have to take off all my clothes, uh, which I'm willing to do. I took a dip here to relax after our long, hardiest trek to one of the most powerful waterfalls I've seen in the country. We will talk about all these other places in three other episodes that we've shot. But if you are interested in visiting, before coming, please make sure to contact local guides, register at the barangay halls so that they know that you are coming and can tell you whether or not it's a good time. Research is so important in this area. Certain periods of the year, a lot of these towns have sacred rituals where they don't allow people who aren't part of the community to come visit. So please make sure you come here with the right mindset and that you respect anything the community tells you. Everything around you, from the beetles playing in the high grass to the mist covering the mountain ranges, extending further than any distance you can comprehend, was here before us. It stands as a testament that our Earth doesn't need us. In the cities, we are the kings and queens ruling over our domain. In nature, we are but humble guests, and like all good visitors, we leave nothing but gifts behind and take only our memories back with us. Don't chase what everyone before you has pictured. Look for immersion, connection, come with no expectations, and just enjoy the journey. I hope that gave you guys a little bit of a glimpse of why Sagada is so important as a tourism hotspot and why it's just so key in today's kind of modern world and as tourism develops in this country, um, it's great to see examples like this of communities coming forward and taking charge of something that is truly theirs and keeping their identity and keeping all their um, beliefs, um, their heritage and everything that they've inherited from their ancestors so strong and so central to who they are.
Uh, we're actually doing three more videos, so make sure you guys watch out for those. Around these whole areas, it's been a crazy, crazy trip, and I hope that um, through them, I'll be able to kind of make you travel to this area. If you are coming to the Philippines, it is so key after the beaches and the white sand um, and all the beach bars and everything. It's so key that you come to the mountain province, to Kalinga, to Benguet, because there's just so much to learn from here. And it's truly a really distinct culture from everything else you might see in the country.